There are many ways to create that beautiful baby boomer or French fade look. This is my first time using power gel to create the baby boomer fade. I'm going to show you how to build the fade and also how to troubleshoot less than perfect fades so the end result is beautiful. Let's get started. So I've completely removed my acrylic nails and I've got them all prepped and ready to go for this hybrid gel. So I'm going to use a clear form. I'm using this clear form because sometimes going in the lamp, it helps reduce heat spikes. Sometimes the metal papers can increase the heat. I think it's because of the plastic. It's a bit of a different feel. I have a very high hyponychium in my index finger, so it's very hard to form sometimes. I can cut it, and I probably should, but I'm very impatient when I'm doing nails sometimes, and I don't want to take any extra time to do those kinds of things, so I will find a way to make it work. So pinching the ends can give you a bit of an advantage first. See how it gets that look already? Gives you that sort of stiletto shape. And then you can almost like stick the finger right in there. And that does work. It can be very effective. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Magnetic has five different hybrid gel colors. I've got four on my table. I'm just gonna experiment which ones I want, but right now we need the white. So I'm gonna get the white. That is gonna be my fade of the French part of the end. These are harder to open. Now, I will confess, I think I had these, some of them were tipped over, upside down maybe, and that's not good for gel. Gel will find its way out of a jar, even if it's not tipped upside down. <laughs> So I'm going to use this brush, I quite like it, from Gelish. It's got nice firm bristles for really pressing the hybrid down. I get my brush wet with a little bit of alcohol. That's what we're gonna to use today, instead of like a monomer or a slip like Polygel uses. We're just gonna use alcohol. That's actually what the distributor for this product recommended. So that's my brush I'm gonna use, but on the opposite end of this particular one, I have the spatula. And I'm gonna use that to scoop up the product. Now, because the form is not as strong as I'd like it to be, and forms often are, I'm gonna put it on the nail part. And I'm gonna flip my brush over, because that's how this brush is designed, and I'm gonna start pressing down. I'm using my alcohol to move this product around. I'm gonna make an almond shape to match my other hand, see? So I will make a nice almond. Now this is where you want to get, see that line of the white? I'm going to get a little more alcohol and I'm going to use the barrel of the brush and sort of dilute it and see if I can make that line fade a little bit more. This is why you don't really want to use monomer when you're flooding the cuticle too much with the alcohol, you wouldn't want that to be monomer. That's one thing that would not be good. You don't want to do that because too much monomer in the cuticle or on the finger area can cause contact dermatitis or an allergic reaction to the product over time. So we want to be very careful that we're not doing that. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up, make sure it's straight. Now, because the form is part of this design right now in your first layer, I could nuke this if I'm happy with it and add more to it, and that would make it stronger and I wouldn't have to rely on the form so much. So honestly, I think I'm going to do just that. I'm going to put it into my lamp. Now with the magnetic power gel, you need two minutes for an UV and 90 seconds for an LED lamp. 
and you want a big hand lamp, a powerful lamp, not just a little one that we use for soft gel polish. That's not what you want. You want a big one. Okay. Now I'm just going to examine. It's not quite wide enough for me for the shape. It's a little too narrow. Okay, I'm going to bring my white back. White is something you can't add after when you put the fade part of the pink on top. It's too late then. So you want to make sure you get your white down now. Now is the time. So I'm going to lay a little bit more in here. And I'm going to just bring it out to the side. Now this is all about structures, what I'm doing right now. That has to be brought out to the side to make sure that this nail is not going to break. So that's what I'm really focused on right now. Not so much design. Okay, see how I did that? And I really want to blend that white in there beautifully because I don't want any shadowing or discolorization. So I'm going to add a little bit more on the other side and do virtually the same thing. And that's probably a bit too much, so I'll take a little bit with me when I go. And I'll just wipe it back into the jar. And I'll get a little bit of moisture, which is the alcohol. And I'm just going to push it around. And again, I'm really focusing on my structure and my strength at the stress point here. I'm just adding there so I don't have any issues whatsoever of breaking. Index fingers, you really gotta focus on making sure it is strong because that's what the most common finger is we break is the index. It's one of the most busiest fingers, especially on our dominant hand. Okay, well obviously that's not quite the shape. That's a roundabout shape and we get a nice almond, pointy almond out of that. So I'm just gonna double check everything. And again, the wonderful thing about this new hybrid gel that they've come out with is it feels like an acrylic, it plays like an acrylic, but it doesn't harden and cure up fast like an acrylic. So there's a long time to play and perfect. So now what I'm gonna do, really important, once I determine my white and where I want it to be, I'm gonna nuke it before I put the pink on. If you put the pink on now, it's gonna disturb the white and pull it out of its fade. And that's what you don't want. That tip is also applied to acrylic or hard gel. When you're putting acrylic on, make sure that that white, the layer you lay down first, is totally hardened or cured if it's hard gel before you put your next layer of pink on. Now, if you're working on a client or even just yourself and you want to move forward, you can go ahead and form the next one and then do the white, form the next one and do the white. I tend to form as I go because forms can easily be bumped out of place and you don't want that. You spend so much time trying to make it perfect, right? And really the form is so important. But for this purpose of the video, I want to get on it and create one nail complete. So I'm going to finish and show you that now. So we have a couple of decisions to make, you guys. The Power Gel has a color called the Extender. So the Extender is meant to be that when we extend the nail bed, it's going to be solid in color. So quite a good opacity. You don't want anything to see through on it. And the other choice that I'm having here is the Nude. Now, when I was talking to Nadia, the distributor for the product in North America, she says Nude is one of her favorites. They also have a pink, but it's a little more translucent and you can see through it. We don't want to see through it so much because we're going to use that as part of the fade. So let's take her advice and check out the Nude. Now again, they're not usually this messy. That was totally my fault. I stored it upside down. Bad. Bad nail technician. Okay, so that is a pretty color. Let's put it on here and see how it fades out. I'm just going to scoop up a little bit. We're gonna do the cuticle and bring it over top of the white to create that fade. This is where you want it as thin as you can get it, right at the cuticle. But you don't want it to touch the skin or the cuticle. And this is the beauty of working with a hybrid gel, is you have no rush. When you're working with acrylic, it's curing up on you, and you really gotta hurry. 
but in this situation, there is no rush. And Nadia is right, this is a beautiful color. This is where the technique comes in with fading between the two. This is what makes the baby boomer fade or the French fade. You gotta bring this nude over top of the white, but as it comes over the white, we are trying to soften it as much as possible. Look at that bubble in there. <laughs> just pop that bubble. It's good to recognize those before you nuke them in there. So I just popped them and I'm just fading this beautiful color over top of the white as much as possible. It's very pretty. Very pretty. I think I still see that bubble. Make sure I've got that. Now I do bring it this down to the side because I don't necessarily want to bring that pink right over top of the white. Now I'm stopping it about here. It looks like I'm brushing it to the tip, but I'm actually not. And I'm actually gonna try to separate the gel, the nude color as much as possible. I'm like breaking it up just as you would with acrylic, except of course there's time. I'm also gonna get rid of this form right now. It's just in my way. I got some old stuff on my brush and I brought it right in, so I don't want that. I get so picky with fades and when I don't have to finish being forced by a time frame, I'll just like fade forever. But at some point you just gotta give it up. And I think I'm reaching that point where I just gonna have to be okay. Okay, so that faded quite nicely. I am going to just clean off the tip, make sure that the tip remains for the white whiteness that I want it to. Now I will notice it's a little bit, maybe I added a little too much because I ended up covering it with pink anyway. It really is a matter of how you're going to do your fade. Are you going to do it so it's mostly white and a little bit of fading of the pink? Or are you going to bring the pink right down and make it look like a longer extended nail bed? There's the two options of how you want to do it. And I guess I really did not decide that before I did this. So it looks like I particularly just naturally like a longer sort of an extended pink part. So it's fading into the white. So when you get the desired look that you like, don't forget to give it a little nuke. And again, that's 90 seconds. You can do a flash cure too, which is fine for a situation like this. You just want to flash cure it, which means you give it, you know, five to 10 seconds and then you can take it out and then it'll get nuked again as you go. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other four fingers and then there's one more trick to do before we finalize this look. So just as I'm doing this, I'm even actually getting better as I do it. Make the white quite thin and narrow this way so you have a lot more room for structure for the pink part. You don't need the structure so much in the white. You need it in the pink and then in the final step I'm going to show you. So you can see how much tinier I did it there, which is going to be better. I'll show you. It's funny how you can learn literally from one nail to the next.
just going to nuke this in here. That's after they finish the pink. So I'm going to show you another little trick you can do. There's two ways you can do a fade. You can work with it just with the pink and the white and leave it at that, or you can clear cap it. But if you're going to clear cap a fade, whether it's acrylic or gel or this, you want to make sure that the design you have is exactly right. This requires a bit more information for you. So let's, let's get into that together now. Maybe I'll show that to you now. So what happens is, if you're going to clear cap anything, when you file eventually, you'll only be filing that clear cap. And that's a good thing because you're just trying to file the clear cap to protect your design. But if you do not clear cap these designs and you file on top of it, you might take away some of the design that you did to create the fade, that soft pink look. But you won't know until you file it sometimes, so it depends on how thick your pink is. So it's got to be pretty accurate all the way through that pink and fading ever so evenly all through that layer of pink if you're going to file on top of the pink. So these ones I'm not convinced I'm perfectly 100% happy. You can see that this one is a little bit more pink over top of the white. And I don't really like that so much. I like it to look a little bit whiter. But this one, I didn't do the white so thick and the pink is looking pretty good. Now we've nuked it so I could file directly on top of it or I could get a little bit of clear. Now clears in these types of products, these hybrid gels, are not crystal clear, not like acrylic or gel, so clear. It's going to have a bit of a cloudy or not so clear look, but it might work to our advantage when it comes to blending this out. You can see I put a bead of clear. Now I'm going to use this to actually protect the design and also create the arch. If you're going to do this method, you don't want to do the arch so high with the pink and the white if you're going to add clear on top because if you've already built your pink and your white with the arch, you won't need the clear. The clear you can use for your arch. If you build the pink and the white together thick enough, you want to put clear on top of that to make it even thicker, right? And then when you're trying to make your finger where you're sculpting it to look beautiful and as thin as you want it to be, you'll file all the clear away. So there still is a dimension of pink and white you want to get. If you're going to have the clear on top, you've got to leave room for it. This particular finger, I did leave room for it. These ones, if I put clear on top now, it's just going to be too thick overall. So I'm going to place the clear. I'm just going to blend it in nicely and it's going to be creating my arch and I'm going to pull it right down over top of the entire finger, right to the end of the white to give it that strength and apex that I really didn't build into it specifically thinking I'm going to do the clear on top. That actually looks really pretty. I wasn't 100% sure about my pink blend on top of it, and I thought it looked kind of not as faded as I want. But I don't know if you can get it, you know, perfect without spending all day doing it because I'm so used to acrylic and I can blend that really well. This is a little bit different for me, so it's not as easy as a blend. But you could spend all day and you will get it. I do have an acrylic baby boomer fade. You can check that out. Cameraman, I'll put the card somewhere up there. <laughs> Okay, that actually looks pretty good. I don't know if I want to clear cap these ones because if I look at them sideways, if you look at it sideways, this one is perfect. That's going to file up beautifully. And I like the color it contains. It's beautiful. But this is a little high. And I will file that away to make it not so high. But when it blends down, to, I might file the pink away and I might not like it. So if I clear cap it, I'm kind of holding it in there. I might not like that. This one is too much pink over top of the white. So... I don't like that one as much, so I might file that down, maybe even redo the pink or soften it and put some clear on top. And let's do the thumb. And keep in mind, because this is art, this truly is an art form. So you can see how much I've learned from one finger to the next. Now I could nail this and be done by the end of this session. And when I get a client, I might not be as on that day and create such beautiful art, or I could nail it and just do it really, really good and just be totally on that day. So keep in mind, if you're doing it good one day and not the next, this is art, right? And sometimes you think it's not good and somebody else thinks it's amazing. <laughs> so it's very subjective. And sometimes we're a little hard on ourselves. Now let's see if I can do this 
even better. Did I nuke this? Do you remember Caravan? Um, yeah, I thought we did. I'm not convinced that I did. The clear layer? Oh, maybe not the I clear I don't think layer. we did. Yeah, maybe not. I'm getting so carried away. Oh, th what I want to mention, I have a new website. You can find any video I've done, videos.nailcareer.com. If you just punch that in, you can then, when you see the website, you can punch in Grant and it'll show all the Grant videos or hybrid nails. It'll show all the hybrid nails or Mauve Polish. It'll show all and so on and so on and so on. It's really fun. I'm glad it makes it so easy when I'm answering a question sometimes to find a video. I can punch that in and I can find it real quick. Now I'm going to take a big lump of my white again. So what I have learned just doing this process right here and explaining it a little bit better. When I put the white down, I'm putting the pink down and I'm smoothing it over here. Then I'm going to clear cap it if that's if I'm so inclined to do that to sort of encase my design. If I make the white too thick and I put the pink over top, if I'm going to bring the pink down a little bit, by the time I file it, I might bring up too much of the pink off and expose too much of the white and then you've got not a very nice blend. So let's go thinner in the white like I did on this one, which was a better result. This one to me looks better than this one. So bring the white down a little, bring the pink over, and then we can cap it with a clear. But if we bring the white too high, they kind of glide into each other and then we chop the pink off as we file, if that makes any sense. It's one of those things I'm trying to describe something that you kind of, when you're doing it, you really get it. But you know, practice makes perfect. Just keep trying it. We must make mistakes in order to move on, right? Okay, and don't be afraid of those mistakes. Those are what gives us the strength and the encouragement to go forward. I do when I do the fade. I don't like to leave a line in there. I like to make sure I fade that line. And maybe that's a little silly, but I find if you're going to fill a fade like that, you don't want a line up here when they do it, because then you got to dig down to that line. At least if it's soft, you can continue a fade and fill it. And when you fill it, you can blend it in a bit easier together. If you got a line in there, you got to file it out. So I'm not going to do this white as thick as I did the index. I'm going to bring it down a bit. And I mean down this way, right? So it's not thick this way. It's a long almond, but... Okay, and you can see Right on the base there, it's nice and smooth. But that's pretty, I like it. So it's not too big. If I look down this way, it's all there. It's good. It's just not too thick. I think that's the error I made on the index. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a nuke. I'm just gonna give it like a few seconds, you know, like a flash cure, just so we can get on. Okay, my pink. Now I don't want that down there. Just move that right up. Pressure is something really hard to translate via this medium as in YouTube. So I will tell you, this is just a very gentle pressure right at the cuticle, just with the tip of the brush. Very, very gentle. But I've got a fair amount of alcohol on there. And then I'm just pushing a little bit harder. 
Seems like the thicker the power gel is, the harder you gotta press to get it down. But if it's just a thin area, you don't have to press that hard. Now this is my arch. Yeah, it may be a little too much on there, really. Let's, let's see, it might have a bit too much as far as the power gel goes. Might be too much pink on there. Let's see if it just fades nicely. Yeah, see how it's a little bit higher? I'm gonna actually gonna take some of that off. And let's push it back up again. Got a little too excited for my arch. I'm, I'm so focused on that sometimes. But let's just push this back because I do wanna fill that arch area. But I don't wanna bring the pink down so far. This looks better. Let's try this. So then we won't end up bringing the pink down too far. I don't want it to cover my white. I just want it to softly blend into it. That's way better. Yeah, so I just got too much on there. Okay, I'm gonna give it a nuke. I'm gonna gather my clear. I'm using this as my structure bead. This is pretty good structurally, but if I put a nice thin layer over top of it, as we can see, it smoothed this one out quite beautifully. So let's see if it does the same for us on this one. Now I don't have to place this bead necessarily close to the cuticle, but I am focusing on the area here where the pink joins the white. That's the color area I'm really trying to protect and I don't want to file it into it too much because it's rather thinnish. And if I file into it too much, it's going to possibly ruin the whole color blend that I've created. So this bead here, this clear bead, is more focusing on the stress point and the color area where the color is blending over top of the white. I'm really just trying to focus and, and protect that. And I'll take it right to the end so it will remain all one color and there won't be any shadowing. See how that just blended so beautifully? We just want to take it right to the end though. I don't think I can make it that long, but I'm definitely going to take it to the end just in case. Okay, so you can see how that really softened it and made it quite a beautiful blend. Now I will say, I could definitely have not shown you these steps of progression and learning, my ego says that I shouldn't and I should just cut it all out and do it all again. But then I'm not really teaching you how we can learn as we go because I've been doing it a long time, but with new products coming out all the time, I'm still learning too. So I know where I'm trying to get. It just takes sometimes a bit to get there. So we can do it together. I'm really happy with that one. So I've just got one more left to do. I'm just gonna do the pinky. And then we're gonna sculpt these and see what they look like. I need to feel calm, bleak, calm, bleak. Your voice is so sweet, so sweet. I need to feel the same, the same. I know that we can. Okay, I'm just gonna nuke it and then I'm gonna step by step, I'm gonna walk through the sculpting.
So when you take it out of the light, just make sure that you've got all the sticky layer removed just before you file. Okay, so with filing, let's walk it through a little bit and I'll show you some tips on filing. I am going to use a coarse file to start and usually I always determine my sides and my length. So what I mean by that is I will pull back the skin, make sure there's nothing touching there, and I will make sure that the side is completely parallel with the side of my natural nail. So I'll go down like this. I'm just sort of, you know how it's kind of, it's kind of rough and icky? So I'm literally just kind of smoothing that up. And I'm going to go almond, so I'm sort of like a pointy almond. So I'm just giving it a bit of a, just smoothing it. And then I will determine the length as well. I'm going to leave it this length. I think the length is just fine. Then I'll flip it over like this. And I'm going to pull the skin away from there. And I'm going to do it underneath. And again, right down the side. So to determine the length of the side. And make it nice and smooth. Then I'll look down the barrel of it. And if anything's drooping below, then I will make sure I file that so it's nice and even. It's not drooping too far. So then this particular nail, I can see that it's very bulky over here. And it's not too bad over here. So I'm going to lean my file this way. And I'm literally just filing on this edge right here to take away all that bulk. That's where my main focus is. Now I'm simply sculpting in this situation. So I'm hoping that my pink is as even with my white as I want it to be for the thickness of this nail. I suspect it is not. <laughs> so I'm going to find that out as I'm filing. So then I'll go over top of the whole nail, especially near the end. If you look at this nail, you can see near the end, it's very bulky and thick. So I'm going to focus that. I don't want that bulk near the end. So I'm going to make sure that I take that off. Now you could take it from the bottom side up, but if you formed it properly, you wouldn't want to do that. I still find it too bulky on the side coming out this way. So I am going to focus on making this a bit narrower. My, my fingers are not very wide. They're actually kind of narrow. So I want to make sure that the gel is not wider than my finger. I find that a real common mistake is that nails are often made like a jacket size. It's two sizes too big for a person. The nails are like two sizes too big for the person's nail. So keep that in mind. I find that a really common problem. And it makes sense because it's such a small surface that we're working on. So you got to keep it quite small. And often we don't, especially when we're learning, we make those mistakes. Okay. So right now I'm sort of getting my almond shape. I'm going to bring that right into a point at the end. I still didn't shape it good enough. So I'm just going to fine tune that shape a little bit more. That's a bit better. But this, I find, is still a bit too thick on this one side. So around the cuticle, I did do it quite nice and thin. and It's quite narrow there, which is great because I don't have to really file in there too much. So just a couple passes of the file very gently, very carefully, so you're not hitting the cuticle. I will just pass you the cuticle just to make sure it's nice. And it's pretty flush. I don't have to worry about that too much. So I will look down the barrel too, and I want it to kind of that kind of dolphin nose to come to a point. So then I will literally start just focusing on the point on the end, just angling the file. So I'm just taking off sort of the end that way. Now when I'm filing too, I try not to keep it in one spot all the time. I'm sort of curving the file at the same time as I'm filing to create that nice round rocking motion to keep the nail very round. That's looking pretty good. Then I'll look at it sideways and make sure that it's got a nice arch and this is starting to look pretty good. Okay. 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'll go ahead and do the same for all of the fingers. Now this one I was a little concerned because of the way I constructed it. There's no clear capping over these two. So if I file too far into my pink, I'm gonna lose my pink fade design. So I do have to be careful with these two in particular. I don't have that protection of the clear. Now I do know this one is quite humpy, see that? That's a ridiculous arch. That's got to come down. Fortunately, the arch is not gonna hopefully interfere with the fade out that I did. See that white spot? That's just where I'm filing. Everywhere around it, the file is not hitting. It's just gonna be hitting that white spot, see that? And I'm doing that just so I can take that arch down that I just did, just way too bulky. See how I'm still just hitting that one spot? And what is that revealing? It's revealing a whitish patch because there's not enough pink or my white was too high. So I learned a lesson on that one. Okay, so let's file this one and see how he measured up. I determine my shapes, lengths and sides. That's the first thing I do when I'm filing. It's a little bit awkward because I'm trying to keep it on the table here. When I'm filing myself, I'm just like this, right? But I'm trying to look professional. This one's pretty good. You can sort of see the arch is actually pretty good. There's not a whole lot of filing I have to do for this one. That's the thing, the better you get at sculpting and applying your product, the less filing you have to do. It's just easier all the way around. So I'm going over the whole nail because the whole nail's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna start filing over the whole thing rather evenly and just smoothing it out. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That one didn't need much filing at all. That's basically done. Okay, so the pinky. The pinky's a little harder, especially when you're doing your own hands, because that finger doesn't have a whole lot of strength in it. So it's one of the hardest ones to file on your own. Often, I will take my other fingers and I will hold it like that. But just be careful, because you can file the other fingers mistakenly. Now, this is a little bit long. I like it but it is a little long. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the end and I'm just gonna do it this way. I find that's the easiest way. And then almond into the point, the blunt part that I took off. I think we got ourselves a new set of nails here. Now I did clear cap the pinky too. So everything should be rather intact on this one as well. Well, I learned a lot doing this, didn't I? I almost messed up the index, but you know, the index is not too bad. But I certainly messed up this little bit of an arch. I just took out too much. So you can see the fades are pretty good, I have to say, but this one is bad. I'm gonna highlight it and see if you can see it, but I'm just putting a little bit of prep on there so you can see it. See that? See how the white is just seen too much through? So that is the thickness about where I want the nail to be. So if I put more product on that now to cover that up, it's going to be higher again. I'm just going to want to file it off. So I actually have to go below that to fill in it being pink to even out to the rest of the nail. So I'm going to file that now and go below and then I'm going to fill it in with pink to show you how I fixed it. I'm gonna highlight this so you can see it quite clearly, I hope. I came down quite a bit. See that? I took it down quite a bit so we can put the pink in there and create an arch. I did notice I kind of messed up on this one too. So you don't have to reprime it because product sticks to product pretty good. 
so there's no need to prime it. Primer's meant for the natural nail. So just gonna get a little bit. See that big hole that I've made? If you look at it sideways, you see how there's no arch in there? Cuticle is pretty good, but this spot right here needs a little TLC. I filed that all the way from there. Hopefully I'll fade this a little bit better. Get a little more alcohol and just fade it toward the end. A little bit more smooth. That's better. That's way better, right? Eh? Let me just look at it this way. Yeah, that's better. I can still see a line, it's almost like a French. I think because there's not really enough white underneath to be that far, so. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Maybe people wouldn't really notice that. It just depends on where your eye might go, but for some reason it's bothering me. So I'm gonna see if I can go a little bit stronger to sort of cover that smile line I'm seeing under there. And maybe I'm getting too picky you now, I don't know, but I'm maybe brush back this way a little bit. I don't really want to go much higher. That's pretty, pretty good there. I don't like really thick nails. So when you don't like a thick nail, your precision of the art Underneath the design that you're doing has to be very accurate. Thick nails, you can really hide those errors. But if you don't want a thick nail, you can be much more precise. So I did make the same mistake here. So I'm going to add, and I can do two nails together. I can just nuke them at the same time. I'm going to add, you can see that big hole I have there, right? Just going to put. Just gently blend it all in together. That looks a lot better. I feel a lot better about that now. It looks a lot better. You can see it's a pretty easy fix. Just remember you want to file down far enough so you can put the new stuff in. If you don't file down, then it's going to end up being too thick. There we go. That looks a lot better. Now I'll nuke it together. So that's great. I feel better about that now that I fixed that little error. So now the reveals will look good. In fact, I'm just going to file them up. I'm going to top coat them and let's check out those reveal shots. <laughs> So once I did a few corrections on a few little boo-boos, all in all, it turned out pretty good. Well, I sure hope that helps you out with a few little issues with the French baby boomer fade you might have been having. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey.